Many times when students are asked to develop a research project, whether it's a speech, written report, or other work resulting from research, a great deal of time is spent looking for their sources. Using the Internet and library databases has made it easier to find sources, but often there are so many to choose from, the task becomes overwhelming, especially when quality is important. Let's look at several factors to consider when selecting which sources to use, assuming that you have already developed a search strategy to locate relevant materials. After locating sources relevant to your topic, consider the type of publication. Who is their intended audience? Most of us are familiar with general or popular materials. They are written for the general public and don't assume the readers have any background or professional training to understand the information. In addition, the authors of the material are often reporters and journalists, and their expertise is in writing in a manner that explains complex ideas in simple language and style. Most of the publications we know about in this area are magazines and newspapers, but also many websites and books are written geared to the general public. Professional literature, also called scholarly or research materials, are written by professionals for professionals in the same field. For example, medical doctors conduct research through carefully documented experiments about cancer, the common cold, and other health concerns, and then share this information in journal articles. Other professionals share research results within their professions as well. For example, teachers writing for teachers, accountants writing for other accountants. Again, the information is published in journals. Most journals also have a peer review process where the article is carefully checked by other professionals in the field for validity and ethical research methodology. Most of this type of information is published in journal articles, but sometimes it is available through government documents, books, and websites as well. Throughout your college career, you will be encouraged to use the professional literature in journals for your research, and by the time you graduate, you should be very familiar with the major journals in your field. However, since journal articles are written by and for professionals, they assume their readers have extensive background in the discipline, so they may be difficult to understand. Reference materials are available to help bridge the gap between the two levels of information. As you reflect on the various types of reference works, remember they have different purposes. Dictionaries focus on the definition of a particular word. Encyclopedias summarize what is known and provide a theoretical foundation. Handbooks are usually specific to a particular field within a discipline and focus on a specific application and atlases provide maps and information about an area. Reference sources are meant to help you understand the advanced information in the primary sources you choose. Cite the reference sources for the information needed to ensure your understanding of the issue. Your audience will probably need the explanation as well. However, scope is the term to describe the level of information presented, which is determined by the intended audience and reflected in the type of publication. On the college level, professional and scholarly journals should be the sources for most research. Information you are citing in your research should be considered current and still valid, so the general guideline is that your sources should be no more than five years old. There are disciplines in which you shouldn't use anything more than two years old, such as technology. And there are topics which require you to use an older article to gain more information about how a situation developed, especially historical research topics. If you have resources that you feel are important to use, but are more than five years old, make sure the information is still valid and check with your instructor. To assess the level of originality, determine where and how the author developed the idea or information. There are three main levels of originality, primary sources, secondary sources, and tertiary sources. These vary somewhat depending on the area of study the source is from. In the arts and humanities, primary sources are original creative works such as paintings, sculptures, performances, 
music, poetry, prose, short stories, novels, diaries, letters, and more. These original works are often critiqued and analyzed in secondary sources, and the critique or analysis is published in professional literature for those fields. However, many times these original works are interpreted, explained, and summarized in tertiary sources. In the sciences, the primary sources are raw data, such as records of experiments, and the results written in a report by the person who conducted the research and often published in the professional literature for their field of study. These primary sources are often critiqued and analyzed by others in that profession and published as secondary sources. Many times someone unaffiliated with the research explains the research study to the general public through the news media and other popular literature and these interpretations, explanations, and summaries are published in tertiary sources. You should always question why did the author share this information? Many articles, television programs, and other sources of information are developed to entertain, and we enjoy them. Sometimes they expose us to new ideas, and we even learn from them, but their ultimate purpose is to entertain. Media also develop programming to persuade their audience, and many of these are simply advertising. Sometimes they are very convincing and appear to be informative, but the material is presented in a biased manner. Be careful. Commercial sources have a goal to sell their products, services, and ideas, and can be misleading. When an author's intent is to share knowledge and understanding to inform others of what they have discovered, the article is worthy of using for research. Sources developed to entertain or persuade should rarely be used as a source of information for college-level research projects. Why should you believe this author? What has this person done to be considered an expert? Most of you will become experts on your topics by the time you are done with this research project, but officially you need to have at least a master's degree in your discipline and several years of professional experience before you are considered an expert. Also, most authors of professional literature perform their own experiments and do their own data analysis for their publications. Their articles are considered primary research reports and have a great deal more credibility as a result. There are corporate authors where a group or agency or company is responsible for the research and resulting publication. Consider their credentials as well. So now you have five criteria to assess each resource you consider using as a reference for your research. In most databases, it is fairly easy to limit the results to scholarly or peer-reviewed articles. It is also simple to have the results list compile the citations chronologically, usually with the newest ones at the top. And, on the record for each article, many databases include author information, so that is easy to check. To assess the originality and the reason for the articles, the abstract is the best tool. If you don't have an abstract, carefully read the introduction to assess the level of originality and the reason for the publication. Use these same criteria to assess all sources being considered, whether the format is in a book, article, website, or another format. An assessment scale has been developed to score each resource you consider, two points for each factor. For scope, consider the type of publication and the intended audience. If you have a journal or other type of professional literature, the source gets two points. If the information is from a magazine, newspaper, or other general publication, the article gets one point. If it is an unpublished source, no points are awarded. For currency, the article gets two points if published within the last five years one point if published between five and ten years ago, and zero points if it was published more than ten years ago, or if no date is known. When determining the originality of a source, 
Look at how the information was learned. If the material was acquired through a research study and analysis of original data, it is primary research and the article gets two points. If the article compiles, critiques, or analyzes information mainly from primary sources, then the article gets one point. Zero points are awarded for tertiary research, which usually interprets, explains, or summarizes secondary research. If the article's purpose is to inform, add another two points to the score. If the purpose is to entertain or persuade, zero points are awarded. When assessing the author's expertise, award the source two points if the author's name and credentials are provided and relevant to the topic. Award one point if the author's name is provided and zero points if written anonymously. Remember, there are corporate authors and their credentials are important as well. As you score your results for each resource, simply write S-C-O-R-E vertically in a blank area of the record, which includes the citation and the abstract. For each of the factors, write the resulting score for your resource, then add them together for a credibility score. Each resource has a possibility of earning a credibility score of 10 points. If you think about this as a grade for each resource, most references that get at least an 8 are acceptable. Those that score 6 or 7 are questionable and should be reviewed again about whether they should be used for your college level research project. Those that get 5 or less points have a low credibility score and probably should not be used. If you would like any assistance in locating materials for your research projects, please contact the ISU Library Reference Desk, the ISU Library in Meridian, or the University Library Center in Idaho Falls. We would love to help you.